Well, hey there, folks, and welcome to the BRO Reloading Bench. I'm your host, Wade Rush. So many of you guys have picked up a 30 cal mold from Marty out there that you uh, have been asking me, Wade, what is your favorite loads with the 30 caliber number one buck? I mean, I've heard from a bunch of you about the number one buck. Well, my Stoger loves it, and I do have some favorite loads. Let's get into it. Loads of, oh, man, here I am dropping stuff everywhere. Loads of you guys have, uh, are loading two and three quarter inch stuff. And so, uh, some of my favorite two and three quarter inch hulls, once fired the clear smoky Fioki, get some blue every once in a while. Man, the Rio, they really reload nicely whenever you can get your hands on them, okay? The, uh, so right out of the gate, that's just, I just pulled a handful out of here, Rio and Fioki. So let's get them, uh, get over here on the uh, size master. And let's get these things decapped and resized. So, number one, 30 cal is one of my absolute favorite buckshot sizes. Always has been, because my 870, my 870 loves that, um, the old Winchester 24 pellet number one. Uh -huh. A lot of you guys have uh, have shot that one over the years. That's one of my favorite. My uh, my Stover loves it. Virtually impossible to find this year. You're probably not going to find it anywhere, which is sad. But um, that's why so many of you are doing what you're doing right now. You've gotten into the reloading part of this, and you find you're going to find out as you get into it, and the more time you spend at it. The more you do this, you're going to find out that your reloads are going to really surpass, are going to be way better than anything you can find at the store. Why? Because everything you find at the store, because everything you find at the store is made by a machine, is put together by a machine. Everything you make is you putting your eyes on it, you're, you're picking up every pellet. Here's some, I'm, I'm going to pull out here just a handful of my polished 30 cal out of Marty's mold here. That is some beautiful stuff right there, ain't it? Not, treated with nothing but the tumbler, with the rock tumbler, 12 plus hours in the rock tumbler. That's what we're going to be using today. And you're going to find out that everything that you put your hands on multiple times and every pellet is dropped in there one at a time, lined up and eyeballed by you, it's done just as perfect as you can make it. And whenever you're running, especially if you're running your powder through a machine like the Hornady Lock and Load that I use here, or even these metering bars here on your make machines, these things are really, really good stuff. The, um, the Lee tabletop drum measure, excellent stuff. They throw uh, powder charges virtually right on the money. So your stuff is just going to be better. That's just all there is to it. All right, today I'm going back with, uh, could be uh, 616 every once in a while, but most of it today is using the Shaddai primers. Now, whenever I do load, whenever uh, I'm not swaging the primer pockets back on the, uh, on the Rio holes, because I've got some Rio primers sitting right here. So I just go back with the Rio primer. Nobel Sport, Fioki 616, Shaddai, Standard Shaddite primers and uh, what was uh, in Rio. Uh, those four imports are outstanding primers, never had a problem, and I use the same data for all of those import Italian, Spanish, Euro type primers. These are some great imports, they really are. So, anyway, and if you're using the, the Spanish Euro hulls, Italian hulls, you're going to need to be using these because all of these primers are slightly bigger than the uh, than the CCIs, Winchesters, and all that of the, uh, your American-made primers. All right, now we got all that all that taken care of. We're going back with Shadite primers and the uh, and the Fioki Shadite uh, whatever once fired type uh, holes that we're loading here. Even in the American hulls, the Shittite primers and the 616s work outstanding. That's what I got here on the bench. 
and when I put together an American hull and all that, we're just going to be using the uh, the Shaddite primers. That's I think most of everybody's been able to get their hands on some. And everything pretty much is long shot powder today because a lot of you guys have been able to get your hands on some. And I'm trying to use what is available to all you guys out there instead of loading up stuff that you guys just have no access to. Uh, I'm here to try to help you guys not, not use a bunch of stuff that you don't have. So we're going to get a few primed up here just for practical and demo purposes. And uh, saying, Wade, do you have a favorite hull and all that other stuff? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The, these Rios and these Fiokis, these would be my my most favorite hulls. I've got a lot of favorites, but these are these are my primary hulls when going back with Buckshot. They're type uh, thin wall hull. They've got more capacity, and that is important to me. Is more capacity, especially when you're loading Buckshot. All right. Let's, uh, we're going to, like I said, less is more. And in, in, uh, in some of the previous videos, we're finding out the 27 grains of long shot, 26 to 27 grains, and a 2 and 3 quarter inch mag or extended range is an excellent powder charge. So we're going to hit it for 27 grains here on the lock and load. And we're going to talk about wads a little bit. And the 30 cal, some of my favorite wads to use in the uh, in the two and three quarter inch or the mg42 whoops i didn't tip if you got hornady lock and load especially if you got like the hornady lock and load for me anyway the um with the small flake heavy powders like this you need to slow your machine down you hit the speed button you got to hit it twice to put it on slow to kind of minimize your overcharges it over it said 27.3 but we'll fix that easy i'm gonna just uh you fellas can't see what i'm doing here i just took a lead uh dipper and scooped out a few flakes and then we're at 27 grains i didn't have an extra camera set up right here we're kind of doing this in haste but um i do a lot of things in haste as a matter of fact i had shot this video for you guys last night with one of my other smartphones and uh, and it didn't work out well for me. The autofocus kept messing up on it. And so it, it had you guys zooming in and out, in and out all the time. It was driving me nuts whenever I was trying to find a way to fix it. Anyway, it wasn't worth it. So I'm going to fix it for you guys. We're going to reshoot it. The little green wad, it is an MG42 that is just shorter. They're identical. They're the same thing. Now, you can only stack pellets by twos for everything that's pretty well bigger than a, uh, a number a number one size and, and up to 32 cal is about as big as you can get in here. Some of my subs said they're getting 33 caliber in here. It, uh, my 33 cal don't want to stack in here right. It has to do with the diameter of your pellets. But if you look real close, there's hinges. There are two little hinges here in the bottom of this thing for these two pedals. That's the reason why you can only get basically get your your pellets correct size pellets to stack in here by twos so what we got here we got 27 grains of long shot and the really cool thing about these gualandi wads i'm talking the mg42 and the super shorty the, the little green wad or they will fit two and three quarter inch and three inch and three and a half Anything, it'll go in two and three quarter inch up to three and a half. I use all of these Gualandi wads, some of my favorites. I said, well, Wade, wouldn't that be like your, your favorite wad of all time if you could only have one wad? Nope. If I could only have one wad, if I could only have one wad, it'd be the CB1138. But that's for the next video, and it'll follow this one up. Alrighty, MG42 on top of 27 grains of uh, long shot. We're going to get 14 pellets of these beautiful polished number one, 30 caliber number ones, stacked in here by twos for a total of 14 pellets. 10, 11, 12, 
13, 14 perfectly right to the top of the wad. All 14 pellets are perfectly encased in this wad. I know your, um, your old factory number one mags have uh, 20 pellets in it. And the standard number one has 16 pellets in it. Well, my extended range number one has 14 pellets in it, but you also got to remember the factory pellets are actually about 28, 285 caliber. That's why I ordered that special mold size from Marty is because the, uh, it's simply because that the, uh, the Winchester number one, the 24 pellet load has 285 caliber pellets inside of it. See where I'm going with that? This is real 30 caliber. Okay, these pellets are pretty well a good bit bigger. 14 pellets moving at about 1300, 1250 to 1300 foot per second. That's some good stuff. Cover in BP Original. This is one of my favorite number one loads here in the two and a quarter inch. Is is a three inch more powerful than a three uh, two and three quarter inch? Is a three and a half inch more powerful than a two and three quarter inch? No, just more pellets. They all move basically at the same speed. As a matter of fact, in most cases, the three inch and the three and a half inch are definitely moving slower. Sometimes at two hundred foot per second or more slower than they are out of the two and three quarter inch. More powerful? No. Pro you could you could argue less powerful. Because speed plus mass equals your energy. Okay? All right. Now, oh, let me move you guys back around here where you can see the size master. My little brass three inch to two and three quarter adapter from Precision. That is, that is a must have if you got a machine and you're loading two and three quarter inch and three inch. It's uh, uh, all could be in the same sitting. Perfect. And still, even after firing it once, you can still see the buckshot in there really well, especially when you get that buffer in behind it. And you talk about a great round, that's a good one right there. Okay, decap, Rio, two and three quarter inch. Rio primer. Because I just happen to have some. Now, there are videos out there on reswaging these primer pockets to where you can get them taking American hulls and all that. I think it was the uh, uh, Reloader channel. Great guy. He does, does some great stuff. If I can, I think I can find it, I'll put a card right here to how he swages these primer pockets. It's really a simple process, just using a hammer and a 3 8 extension. But I've got some Rio primers. Uh, so we got a Rio primer in here, 27 grains of long shot. We have used 26. Works great. 27 is just right in the middle. Works great. And like I said, the little green wide, it is the same thing as the MG42, only shorter. Same thing, 14 pellets, a 30 caliber number ones. Whew, I can't get over how pretty that stuff is. It's still stacked in here by twos. Four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. BP original, original, that's in the, in the blue can. Oh, wait, don't leave them behind again. Y'all might have been able to see it. I'm using, this is my new smartphone. I, this is the new, uh, the new Samsung, whatever the newest Samsung is. That's what this is. And I'm in here all funky because I'm filming. 
so you guys can see what I'm doing here. That is a beautiful round. All right, we're just gonna grab another Fiocchi. Once fired, your new Shaddai, your new Rio, your new Fiocchi primed work equally well, folks, okay? I just, I have, I happen to have a few primers left and I happen to have uh, from years ago from down at the range. As a matter of fact, you may find some of these. These are the, the blue Fiocchi, the blue clear type Fiocchi. I love these things too. They work great and they are stout. I don't know if they make them out of something different. If Fiocchi makes them out of something different, I was going to say there's a Mirage. They're blue Mirage. This is Rio is what this is. These things are, I mean, these are some stout, tough hulls right here. If you could find these. I had, uh, um, guys, you know, years ago, I used to sell hulls until the United States Postal System put me out of, uh, put me out of business for that. But I had put up several 55-gallon drums I still had of just raw hulls laying out there, probably 150,000 hulls. And all that stuff. Okay, we're getting off on another rabbit trail. CB1138 and a two and three quarter inch. Twenty-seven, a long shot. Oh, this one's easy to remember, ain't it? Clay Buster, CB1138. And I think the new, um, I don't know what precision is carrying these things. They're, 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 I, don't, I don't know what they're called. I'm going I'm to type it up here uh, to find out what the, this other brand is called that makes the copies. Clay Buster isn't the only one making copies now. It's like downrange, something like that. Uh, if I'm incorrect on that, I'll correct myself. CB1138. Fiocchi, once fired. This is actually once fired and 27 grains of long shot. Thirty caliber number ones will stack in here by threes. The other wads they stack in by twos. Here in the CB1138, they're stacking here by threes. We got three, six, nine, fifteen. Looking for a fifteen pellet, thirty cal number one. We cover. BP original because that's what I got if I had 47 I'd use 47 but it's BP original that's what I got 47 works equally well all right I want to forget you guys again all righty Fifteen pellets of extended range number ones and a two and three quarter inch load. Don't let that short brass fool you. This is that is old, old back in the day stuff. Short brass represented target loads. High brass represented hunting loads. Short brass represented target loads. <laughs> High brass represented hunting loads. That's just, it was a quick way to identify paper hulls whenever you looked at them. And that was it. Brass height has nothing to do with hull strength whatsoever. I can load this same load. Do this with something that's a good equal compare. I can load the identical same load in these two hulls right here. No difference whatsoever. Difference of cosmetic. That's it. Boy, that's a real high brass there, ain't it? But that's the thing about high brass and, uh, and short brass. Has nothing to do with hull strength at all. Alrighty, now we got all the two and three quarter inch put together and all that. Make my notes. Oh, my uh, miracle nail. You don't want to forget that. That keeps the 
keeps the buffer in and keeps the moisture out. Dollar store. All right, now let's go to the range and show you how these 200 quarter inch number ones are 